Let's get right into it. Number 7. Background panic scans. You could be sitting on your bed, doing absolutely nothing. No danger, no deadlines, no lion in the room. And yet somewhere deep inside your skull, your brain is quietly scanning for threats like it's being paid overtime. You're relaxed, but your nervous system is acting like it's guarding a haunted house at 3 a.m. This is your brain's threat detection system doing what it does best, assuming something is wrong. Evolution wired you to survive not to chill. Back when humans lived in bushes and everything wanted to eat us, constant scanning made sense. These days, the biggest threat is an unread message or your phone battery at 4%, but your brain hasn't updated the software. So, while you're watching a video or lying down, part of your brain is still checking your heartbeat, muscle tension, sounds in the room, changes in temperature, and that weird feeling in your chest that may or may not mean anything. If it detects even a hint of, hmm, that's new. It sends a tiny alert, not enough to panic but enough to keep you slightly uneasy for no reason. That random feeling of discomfort you can't explain? That's your brain whispering, hey, just in case. It's not intuition. It's not a sixth sense. It's your internal security guard bored out of its mind, inventing problems to stay useful. Basically, your brain is doing back. Number 6. Editing your memories live. Every time you remember something, your brain quietly rewrites it. Not later, not overnight, right now. Memory isn't a recording, it's more like a Wikipedia page anyone can edit, and the editor is deeply unreliable. You think you're replaying the past, but what you're actually doing is rebuilding it from scraps. Emotions sneak in, current beliefs add commentary, details you forgot get replaced with guesses that feel real enough, and once the memory is saved again, Congratulations, that's the new version. That's why two people can experience the same moment and argue years later like they lived on different planets. Your brain isn't lying to you on purpose. It just cares more about a coherent story than accuracy. If changing a detail makes the memory make more sense emotionally, your brain will do it without asking. Even worse, the more confidently you remember something, the more likely it's been edited multiple times. Strong memories are usually the most tampered with. Your brain treats certainty like a design feature, not a warning sign. So when you swear, I remember it exactly, what you really mean is, my brain has committed to this version and refuses to reopen the file. Basically, your past is being quietly fan-fictionalized by your own mind. Number 5. Running simulations without telling you. While you're minding your business, your brain is secretly running simulations of futures that will never happen. Awkward conversations, arguments you might have, embarrassing things you could say, entire scenes starring you, ruining your own life for practice. You're not choosing these thoughts, they just show up. That's because your brain loves preparation more than peace. It would rather stress you out preemptively than risk being unprepared later. So it plays, what if, on loop like a broken trailer for a movie you didn't buy tickets for. The wild part? Your body reacts as if these fake scenarios are real. Heart rate increases, muscles tense, stress hormones get released. Congratulations, you're having a physical reaction to an imaginary event that your brain invented without permission. From your brain's perspective, this is helpful. If you suffer now, you'll be ready later. From your perspective, it's like being haunted by a director who only makes disaster films starring you. Basically, your brain is rehearsing emergencies that never RSVP'd. Number 4. Hijacking your attention. You sit down to do one simple thing, one, and somehow, ten minutes later, you're staring at the wall, checking your phone, remembering something embarrassing from 2016, and wondering if penguins have knees. That wasn't an accident. Your brain did that. Your attention isn't controlled by you as much as you think. It's run by a system that constantly asks, is there something more interesting, more urgent, or more emotionally charged than this? If the answer is yes, even slightly, your focus gets yanked like a leash. The problem is, your brain defines important very loosely. A notification, a random thought, a mild itch, a vague sense of boredom. All of these beat actual responsibilities in the attention hierarchy. That's because novelty and potential reward light up your brain harder than long-term goals ever could. So when you can't focus, it's not because you're lazy. It's because your brain is opportunistic. It wants stimulation now, not pay off later. It evolved to chase berries and avoid snakes, not read emails and plan careers. Basically, your attention span isn't broken. Your brain is just playing favorites without consulting you. Number 3. Emotion first, logic later. You like to think you're rational, calm, thoughtful, but your brain makes emotional decisions first and then politely asks logic to write the explanation afterward. This happens fast, lightning fast. Before you're aware of it, your emotional brain has already labeled something as good, bad, scary, annoying, or exciting. Only then does your rational brain step in and say, yes, here's why that makes sense like a lawyer defending a decision it didn't make. That's why you can dislike someone instantly without knowing why. 
or feel uncomfortable in a perfectly safe situation, or strongly believe something and only later collect reasons to support it. Logic isn't in charge, it's doing public relations. The wild part is how convincing this feels. Your brain presents the final decision as if it was carefully reasoned, when really it was emotionally decided and intellectually decorated. Basically, your brain flips the coin emotionally and then tells you it did the math. Number two, filling silence with noise. Silence makes your brain uncomfortable, really uncomfortable. So when things get quiet, no music, no talking, no scrolling, your brain starts generating content like it's afraid of being alone with itself. Random thoughts pop up, old memories resurface, made up worries appear. You didn't summon these, your brain just hates empty space. It treats silence like a glitch that needs fixing. From an evolutionary standpoint, quiet used to mean danger, silence meant something was watching. So your brain learned to stay alert and busy when there was nothing happening. Unfortunately, now that instinct just means overthinking in bed at 2 a.m. That's why your best ideas and worst anxieties often show up at the same time. Your brain is improvising to fill the void, and it doesn't check the quality before publishing. Basically, your brain would rather stress you out than sit in silence for five seconds. Number one, convincing you, it's you. Here's the biggest trick of all. Your brain convinces you that all of this is you. The thoughts, the impulses, the fears, the distractions, it presents them as your identity instead of what they actually are. Automatic processes firing in the background. Most thoughts aren't chosen, they appear. Most emotions aren't decided, they rise. But your brain packages them as my opinion, my fear, my personality. And because it feels internal, you assume it's intentional. Once you realize this, something strange happens. You get a tiny bit of space, not control, just distance. Enough to notice that your brain is a machine doing machine things, not a truth generator or a moral compass. Basically, your brain is loud, persuasive, and very convincing, but it's not always right. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.